been you. This is Ram Ram. Um, we have been involved in the hackerspace from Amsterdam from quite the beginning. And I have been involved in more hackerspace. So, it's not this, but it's more. Jure, please uh, speak loud. Okay, speak loud. Yeah. Okay. But it's actually this about community. And I'm going to talk about it. So, uh, a <coughs> place is, a, is not a place with tools and uh, whatever sort of that electronics. It's more about the community, it's more about the people who go there and participate uh, in their own projects. Um, it's about the serendipity of having people like IT security, software hackers, to people who know how to use a name and seeing what kind of uh, combinations can come out of that. People go there to learn new skills or touch up old skills. Um, I'll just have like my <coughs> in the same place to kind of bounce ideas on. Um, it, it truly is a, uh, a place which is uh, free from uh, limits. We only have 10 rules in our space. Um, so you can pretty much do almost anything that you like. Um, it, it generates a sense of uh, agency within the people who are members there, who work there. Um, and the aim is to have a hackerspace that has enough tools and enough raw materials that you can literally uh, remove the barriers to creation of whatever you want to do. So, talking about hackerspace, it's, it's actually like a global movement. They are like everywhere, even on, even on Iceland, even on Japan, um, South Africa. Um, I don't think Egypt has been protected yet, but it should be on the list. Um, <laughs> It's actually started as a Kickstarter campaign to help fund the um, um, hackerspace in Egypt. And after you got there, Egypt actually got a hackerspace. So Africa got now, I think, about eight or nine hackerspaces. And recently, Mitz Altman also put up a Kickstarter campaign for a hackerspace in Iraq. So Iraq also has a hackerspace, which I think is really interesting. Um, so. To talk a bit about hackerspaces around the world, um, we have Noise Bridge in the United States, which is in San Francisco. It's really big, I think it's about um, 3,000 square meters. Yes. Yes, I think so. <laughs> it's really big, it's really popular. Is um, it in New York or something? Or South Francisco. Yeah, in San Francisco. Um, so this would actually help to popularize hackerspaces around the world. It was the, the German CCC movement which first started, but it wasn't until people like Mitch uh, in San Francisco set them up that it was uh, a bit of a thing, a bit of a cultural movement. So, this is um, the sea base in Germany, in Berlin. And what is really interesting about it is that they um, got a, a bit of a story around that space. Like, uh, it was like a, some ancient alien artifact which had been crashed into the earth. Um, a lot of sci-fi stories around them, um, which is interesting. But it's actually one of the biggest um, spaces, the most popular spaces around the world. And the oldest, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah. could be, mm -hmm. next to the CCC ones. The, le the legend is that um, it was uh, a bunch of hackers working for the former KGB. Uh, and after the hacking of the Pentagon scandal, they decided to just set up their own little place, um, even including taking the desk from the KGB office. Mm -hmm. so that's, uh, yeah. But in, in Germany? Yeah. yeah, in Berlin. Okay. But I guess then it's not KGB, but the, the, the German <laughs> army? Uh, well, no, well, it, it was, it was, it was, this was okay. the Cold War. It's a oh, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's actually, a, there's actually a movie about it, which is called 23, which is about um, well, Holland and um, the hacker who actually got killed or committed suicide. We don't really know. Who, who hung involved. himself. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah the but he was involved into hacking um, for the KGB into the Pentagon, for example. And he got killed or he committed suicide in the suspicious circumstances. Mm -hmm. We never really, nobody ever, ever knows what 
But you mean yeah. that you mean that the chaos computer camp grew out of that, or you mean the 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 the, the phenomena of hacker spaces grew out of that? Not oh. really hackers, yeah. It, but so C C C C grew out of the old yeah. KGB hackers. Okay. And then C C C literally wrote the book on hacker spaces. Okay. Um, so throughout Germany, like Munich, Hamburg, yeah. uh, they all they all have affiliation with C C C, and e each space is part of that. Group. But again, it wasn't until Mitch set up yeah. uh, one of those great stuff. It's really like popular. Cool. Yeah. It went booming. Yes. Um, but also, Holland has its own, own unique thread in that whole thing because yeah. the hacker thing here. It's also connected. Yeah. The, the hacker thing here comes out of the old uh, squatting movement. Yeah. So we have ASCII, which was a hacker space before hacker space. Yeah. So, but active. Sorry? Active. For example, also yeah, because what what I understand of hackerspaces is in fact that the phenomena is uh, as old as uh, the world is. But uh, four years ago, people realized we should somehow market ourselves to say it like that uh, as hackerspaces, and then uh, all the all the already existing communities in every city thought, hey, you know, we 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 uh, we uh, have. Uh, uh, a non scottable uh, uh, non-used building. Uh, let's ask the city government if we make it uh, could make it a hacker space. Uh, yep. yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically how it started. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it was it was Mitch's work uh, taking the kind of software methodology of defining a solution but no problems. So he created a lot of uh, what he calls hacker space design patterns, which are rules <coughs> or <coughs> processes that you should implement in hack space mm -hmm. to have a kind of hack space structure which is similar to the rest of the world but it also allows this freedom and this organic uh, growth of each hack space so everyone you go to will be completely different in, in atmosphere and culture to any of the others you visit but they'll all have this central theme of openness and, and learning and skills and craft and tools and It's been um, quite interesting lately because um, there have been nuclear problems in mm -hmm. Japan, for example. So, Tokyo hackerspace, which is a bit hidden actually because the government doesn't really like it, so you need to know where it actually is located to actually visit it. I, I'm not sure, but maybe yeah. the guys of Safecast mm -hmm. have their head office in a ha hackerspace or something. You, you know Safecast? The, the, it's a Dutch guy in Japan. He started a week after the, the, the Fukushima disaster. He started uh, measuring radiation environment. Yes, uh, and going to come to that. Yeah, and they now uh, have a. Uh, the, I read they have a head office, mm -hmm. but it, it was in a hackerspace or something. Yeah, uh, it, it could be well be his mm -hmm. Um So they started some sort of campaign to um, get parts uh, to measure the radiation levels across Japan. Um, using leaders they manufacture inside the hackerspaces or people around or connected with the hackerspace. And they actually connected that to some websites, which is basically uh, the Internet of Things so Society. So the data was basically open source. And you could see the measure and see from a map uh, what the radiation levels were in Japan at that particular moment. Time. So that would be really interesting because most of the meters are quite expensive. So Japan and especially the hackerspace in Tokyo made it possible to create cheaper Geiger counters to measure the radiation levels and uh, to provide a non-biased view on the radiation levels. They, they literally bought the whole stock in America of these cheap uh, Geiger counter measuring uh, sensors. For 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 Geiger counting, do you need a uh, proprietary uh, sense uh, thing or or whatever? It's, oh. a, it's a manufactured sensor. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but they're, they're around fifteen or twenty euros. But I mean, is it uh, is it open hardware or? No, it's okay. Not. It's uh, you buy it from a manufacturer. Okay, so it's not like Arduino tools. Yeah, yeah. It's not like Arduino. Okay, did, so it's not like Arduino to, if you want. Also, yes. The sensor is attached to an Arduino 
device that has Ethernet. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the, it's the thing underneath. Mm -hmm. And you plug it into Ethernet, or you, or you put Wi-Fi in it, and it reports it back. And then you can do data mashups on the data. Um, there, was, there was lots of really good ones. So there was one that was measuring um, radiation passing through the country. Um, others had hotspots updated every hour to show you whether <laughs> because yeah, it's actually from Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that's really important, and that also shows how hackerspaces can help, or at least hackers and makers can help in uh, disasters like this one. That you can, uh, together with the global community, we could help and send goods to them uh, and have a non biased view on. So the events like this, for example, because I think it's really important. But it, it's not just um, disasters. I think mean, uh, yeah. in in London, the um, the Arduino and like called Nano was and tested in prototype as well, and that went on to win like the Internet Internet Things Award for the best uh, hardware device. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just had trouble hearing. What what device was this? It was the Nano. Oh, the Nano. Yeah. Um, and again, it's that. That this one guy, Ken Vogue, uh, just developed on this kitchen table. Um, but he had uh, quite a bit of help uh, in the prototyping stages. Like definitely the initial beta boards, uh, designing uh, the hardware problems out of it and doing all the software for it too. Um, and again, that was the community just kind of rallying around. And they, there was this device which was as cheap as an Arduino, had Ethernet on it, uh, and it was useful for them, it was useful, and it went on to be like a big. So, what we do, well, actually we're going to show two projects. Um, so we have Technologia Incognita, or short for Cherry. Um, that basically means an export technology. Uh, Which actually, yeah. yeah. It's a riff on that. Yeah. Um, as far as I remember, it's actually correct Latin. Or no, it's Latin and Greek. Oh, it's in Greek? It's, it's, in, it's an incorrect mixture of Latin and Greek. But we, we <laughs> took inspiration from the old Amsterdam uh, uh, yeah. tagline of uh, what was it? Uh, so we, when we first started to work on getting a hackerspace build-up, which is like... Uh, oh, the way back. <laughs> <laughs> um, we came up with, like, somewhere, somebody came actually up with a list of names which were quite interesting to look at. Um, so it went through... Uh, a number of revisions to actually come up with this one. Um, we picked <coughs> up this one because, I don't know, it sounds really nice and it's not like, I don't know, a casual name. It's a bit different, that's what we like. That's what we are, a bit different. Um, so, somebody, Rainsmoke, is our beloved member, uh, was really good at design. He also designed most of the logos for Hacking at Random, the conference um, in 2009. And he came up with a logo. It's actually um, it's, a, it's a it's a it's so we took the idea. We we used the Terra Incognita Amsterdam uh, adage, and and we wanted something that was maritime related. So we took a, a boat steering wheel, and around that we built a uh, a circuit, uh, which is basically an uh, ethanol chip and some LEDs, and we used a method called Charlie Pixel <coughs> to get more outputs in the chip to provide normally. Um, so each arm of the steering wheel has an LED on it, and we can program it to do any kind of animation you like. Um, so not only is our logo uh, a ship's wheel and something that looks electronic, but it's actually a functional circuit that we, could, that we make up as little credit card size uh, badges and give out to members. Business cards also. It's actually a really good introduction to surface mount soldering too. So. Uh, somebody actually made like uh, our left wall district. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> no. Anyway, somebody, um, it's, it's, it's a bit like of a bad photo, uh, but somebody stripped like a bunch of LEDs to the walls, <laughs> and uh, you can actually program the animation to, to watch it. Uh, it's all written in notes.js. Uh, I don't know why. Um, you, you mean the JavaScript uh, framework? Yeah, it's a uh, okay. JavaScript. Uh, <coughs> so this is, a, this is another example of uh, 
hackerspace's creativity and learning. It, mm -hmm. it was a software guy. All he's ever done is software. He never even sold it before we before we actually joined the space. Um, so we, we taught him how to solve them, taught him a bit about base electronics. Then over the course of six months, he figured out um, how to use an Arduino and, and what uh, I2C was and how to write to that kind of bus and use these LEDs and these shift register microcontrollers. Um, and we put a pledge together for the space and there was about two or three people on this project. And the space, um, a pledge is where you have a project that you want to do or something for the space. It could be a tool, it could be an installation. And people put in like 10 euros each. Um, I think this costs around 150 euros. Um, and we filled the pledge in a couple of days, all of the equipment, and set it up on the wall. So each block is a, essentially larger than the um, and, and yeah, well, it runs up the space. It's better at night than it is in the day. But uh, um, this, this guy, Guido, he, uh, he wrote the back end software and he wants to use it as an educational tool. So people can come along and easily write some like, basic code. Um, to modify animations or make new animations on top of the uh, Node.js infrastructure, but rather than having to write low level uh, processing for the you know, Arduino environment. So, are we all waiting for now to replace Nate on this screen? Yeah. I think <laughs> from the outside, so you can get into the source. There is actually a web interface, but the plan is to be able to go outside the street and start playing. But all the modifying regulations of the phone and the type of yeah. um, So, that's what we talked about a few projects. Um, when did this all start? It started long, we actually were gathering. Uh, yeah, for quite a while. In September, maybe even August. Yeah. The, the inspiration was, uh, I believe, CCC camp. Yeah, so a bunch of, um, actually, the other hackerspace in NAC in Tensile Day. Tech uh, Yeah. Exactly. Um, they were speaking with a few people also from Amsterdam, and they saw talking about hackerspace and blah blah blah. And they knew I have been busy with um, getting a hackerspace up and running for uh, a number of months without much resolve. Uh, and at some point, we all have been brought together at, um, at the case communication camp. And from that moment on, it started rolling. We have uh, Amsterdam. <coughs> printed flyers at the camp. Uh, we set up a, a website which at that moment is still called Magic Smoke. It's also been, been one of the main things we've been going through. Um, and after that we started meeting like every week I believe. Yeah. Uh, first at the um, public library in Amsterdam. After that we moved to <coughs> our beloved cafe, the Tafel, which is close to Central Station. And I know we started meeting there for uh, it lasted for a few months or so until we had this space. Uh, so well, one of the things about setting up a space is uh, it's not so much the again it's not so much the physical space but the community. Uh, and we were originally meeting in the restaurant on top of the old garden class, and we were having all these kind of formal meetings, kind of formalizing our space and our rules and how we were going to go about it. And, uh, but we quickly realized that that isn't really a nice social setting and people don't really get to know each other. So we moved it uh, completely to a cafe at a bar at yeah. Batavia, which is much more social, much more open. And, and over the course of months, people got to know each other. Other people could drop by easily um, and then kind of join in discussions. It was usually more banter than anything happened. Although we occasionally, we did take over the bar at one end and set up uh, soldiering and then drinking. Yeah, yeah, okay yeah, yeah they, were, they were really supportive. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and then after a few months, we built a core community of around yeah. 20 or 30 people. Uh, most of whom pledged to pay uh, the recommended amount as soon as we got there. <coughs> and uh, we got lucky basically one, one evening when uh, Mediamatic said we had a spare annex of their space that we could sublet uh, for a, a reduced price. Uh, and, that, and that's our current space right now. Yeah, so we um, set up the the for anything for the association in October. After that, we have been meeting for quite a few months in the cafe. And after May this year, we finally had a space for April, May, April. So We've already forgotten. Yeah, it's so <coughs> great. So, this is how the space looks like. Actually, these are a bit of like old pictures, but actually, that window has now the um, that, LED that was, wall. That was the prototype for the, uh, the 
the LED. First. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, uh, the dishes at Mediamatic? Yes. Okay. In the in the Faisal Street. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's uh, next to the uh, Basis Cafe. Um, so yeah. No, you see. Uh, well, we actually had the table at the moment there. Yeah. Uh, we moved it to the other side of the room. Yeah. We went. We went. Uh, again, the, the space itself is rigid. We don't set how it looks. And uh, a couple of the members didn't like the layout, so they just took. Uh, their own action and we relayed out the space a little bit, which actually was a massive improvement. Yeah. Um, we've also been donated some equipment over the, over the months, including this huge uh, water table, which weighs about 400 kilograms. Yeah. Um, and it, it took about eight of us to move it into the space. Was it from a, a, a cut, a, a cut no, painting company? No, it was from a university. From a guy oh, okay. um, who actually died a year ago, really sad. Oh. But, um, we have this brother laying around and he didn't do, he just had it laying around that was in the way. So he said, well, if you want to pick it up, you can pick it up. Well, it probably takes two guys to pick it up and put it in a van. <laughs> famous last yeah. words. Yeah. Yeah. Famous it's last words. It took five of us. Yeah, <laughs> five of us. And it took like six of us to put it into the space. <laughs> but um, actually finding the hard the software for it and because engineering the entire protocol actually took like a few months. Uh, but, but we finally got it good. Yeah, it actually worked. Again, it was like a, an effort by the community. I mean, different people had a look at it, and, and then one night, a couple of old uh, hackers who've been around for a while just sat there and, and figured it out. So now we can actually use them. Yeah. Um, there's talk of putting like a laser head onto it to make it into a cutter. Uh, we're things. certainly going to use it as a final cutter and a plotter. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. You still need to move it to the new space. Yes. In a that's going to so so be fun. Because the new space is on the first floor. <coughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's going to be coming. So because this was actually an old bank, what you see there is the glass. It's actually bullet. It's bullet. It's bullet yeah, it's actually bullet. We haven't glass. tested it. But it's all <laughs> that it is actually bullet. And be behind there in the bank teller's office is where we put our tool shop. But we quickly realized we couldn't, we can't really have a tool shop in there because there's no ventilation. Oh. So there's no extraction of fumes or dust, which really limited um, our space, space's yes. ability to be a, a make space. You couldn't really make anything there, and you still can't. So it's essentially just a social area with some ability to do electronics and, and, and light tool work, but not nothing major. Yeah. I mean, figure the firewall flies. One time by soldering, one time by cooking. Yes. Someone set fire to baking paper in the microwave, which is a feat in itself. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, really it's pretty well done. Yeah. I applaud. <coughs> so, this is our, um, actually, this has been rearranged as well. Again. And actually, the light works now as well. Yeah. Are, are that all routers or something? No, oh, so, no. They, so these are all the. Uh, Money boxes. Boxes. Oh, boxes really? Okay. The and they left them there, and we told them, we were told we could use them and have them. So we've been using them as members' storage boxes. So every member who pays up gets a box to put all their things in, uh, and we use those. It's a really handy. Yeah, really handy. So we're going to take them. Oh, yeah. To the new space. Oh, no. um, so yeah, I know it's, it's, it's a bit like good to work on projects there, uh, although it's not really practical space. We are moving now to a much smaller usable space, space, space yeah. which is also uh, more open often. In the same building? No, no we are actually moving to the ACTA building. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, yeah. But it is we in the neighborhood as far as I know, or not? It's all the way in the south. Oh, the okay. South, so okay. Out of the ring. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, isn't that the, uh, the same like the Volkskrant gebouw? That yeah. ECTA building? Yeah, it's the same for them. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 it is meant for small companies who start up and such. Yeah, it's, yeah like a broadcast. Okay, cool. And this is, yeah. Well, that's what they call it. Broadcast. Yeah, it's a bit like a Volkskrant building. You can't really get dirty stuff in the Stuff like um, we've been done in some stuff 
Do you do you have Atari punk consoles? We can build them. <laughs> okay. We, yeah, do have, we do have a retro gaming corner now. Oh yeah. Okay. With, a, with, a, with a SNES and a Sega Master System and uh, many Sonic. Sonic. Yeah. Okay. Sonic, yeah. So, yeah. So if you're stuck in a problem, you're just going to play. So you have to keep going the game corner, play. Oh. Did you do that? Really handy. Should I have the scratch website for the car? Sorry? All these retro games are. Yeah. Call it out. Pong. That's all right. Yeah. So. Actor. Actor. So. It's not this. It's actually the academic center for um, two dentists where they actually educate you to become a dentist. Um, so some people actually got a bit serious with the space being called ACTA, so they have been calling it. <laughs> They're actor. Acta, yeah, well, Hector said Hector. Mm, Hector of Europe? Yeah, well, actually, I, I've been thinking of doing a prank something in that building because we are called the Hector building. But because the resolution has already been dead for a few months, it's, it's no fun anymore. Is it in the neighborhood of the Freie Universiteit? It's uh, next to the Freie Universiteit okay. Hospital. Yeah, in front of five. So it will be 105 square meters, bigger, better, faster, more awesome. Um, we're going to we're going to lay it up so it's more conducive to a place to work. So we're going to have a dedicated tool area, dedicated work areas. The social area is going to be much smaller, um, and we're hoping people will use it in the evenings, and the, in the weekends, to work yeah. on their own private projects. Um, and we'll be, you'll be able to park your car there too, get your car. So. Well, we, we may lose some people. Uh, yeah, it's a bit different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We may lose some people because it's outside of the centre. Um, but there is a metro line, two minutes walk away. Yeah. Um, trams, buses. Trams to buses. Uh, it's not too bad. It, it's yeah, it's okay. Because there's actually an hospital next to it. It's, it's quite good for reaching the actual space next to that. Um, yeah. We're going to open from the 1st of November. Yeah, that's the plan. So we need to start moving in uh, yeah. soon. There are some contract things that the board needs to do by the yeah. signing But we have to sign either this week or next week. So we're waiting on the new contract. Uh, so, about some other hacker spaces. Uh, it was actually Tasky. This is from all, all, all times. Uh, it's actually not around anymore. Oh, really? Working involved in different um, communities and so Yeah, it's very uh, a squad community yeah, as far as I know. So, this is actually like the first hacker space to uh, like the stuff on Hectic from World Combat. But the same people, or uh, some of the people who have been involved in this, are now putting up um, an anarchist Linux user group inside an old sauna. Uh, this is called the Binapret. Sorry, uh, uh, how yeah, it's called? Sauna. Sauna. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's actually an old sauna building. And they are now putting uh, up a few different groups inside that building. They are already in um, So the same people have now been involved in Slug, or something that we call Slug. Um, this is now located at Vinabred. And it's also been busy, but we haven't really been communicating with them. Although they, although they actually said two years ago, we as squatters don't recommend you, if you start a hacker space, to start squatting. So, this is quite interesting. So, don't, if, you, if you want to start a hacker space, don't squat because you need to move every couple of months, couple of months in order yeah. to do that. It's not sustainable. Yeah, it? because I remember ASCII for every year uh, having problems uh, moving to uh, the next squat. Uh. Yes. So, yeah. For Mars, for example, also actually said don't start squatting because we're involved in Oscar and constantly moving. Is that don't do it? And I, and I mean, what um, 
when I heard about hackerspaces, I, my first reaction was, what's new? But after I read about it, I thought, hey, this is quite interesting because it's, uh, it seems to me a, a little bit of a, a, a formalizing structure in a very distributed, chaotic community. And it would be nice, for example, uh, half a year ago, you wrote a letter to the, to the, to the minister with all the other hackerspaces. I mean, if, if you have those hackerspaces, mm -hmm. then uh, th they give a face to the underground community. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. it, it, would, it would be useful as... Uh, yeah, exactly. Sorry? It has been really helpful, actually. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, like, when we actually sent that letter, mm -hmm. um, after that there has been a, a proposal to um, actually include hackers more inside some yeah. stuff. Yeah. So actually, I've been shoot off a few months later. Uh, me and someone else had a discussion with somebody from uh, a party about this actually. And it actually helped because they actually knew, like, oh, we actually know what hackers are and what hacker spaces are. This has been like, really helpful. Like, my mind was blown. I didn't need to explain that to, to a politician actually. It's been quite surprising. Um, so, there actually is more of a positive feeling towards it, although the news every day is still about I don't know, hack databases and leaked stuff from I don't know, that kind of stuff. But people also see now the positive side of hackers and mm -hmm. hacker spaces and the community in the community in general. Yeah and and it is useful as a uh, uh, as a uh, representative of the yeah. underground movement. To, to the wider audience. Yeah. So, uh, but that's my view. No, on no, no. Uh, so our our community, especially uh, and from hackerspaces that I've been involved, in, we don't have a hierarchy. We don't have any kind of uh, real leadership within the space that tells people what they can do, what they can't do, and how to behave. We have a set of guidelines. We only have ten ten of these rules. Um, some of them are, are a bit silly, like rule zero, which is do not be on fire. Which is a way of saying that don't harm yourself, don't, you know, don't do that. And we have other rules which are very vague, um, but encourage you, like rule four, which is uh, if you see something that's broken, don't complain, fix it. Which is, which is a way of saying, well, take action yourself. You know, you're empowered to do anything, you know, do these things, do anything you like. Uh, as long as it's not kind of harming other people or harming the space. But um, I and we find that the space itself has self-organized uh, to the point where we have people who come in and open it and kind of help maintain the space a little bit and then we have other people who self-volunteer to do communications and presentation uh, yeah like us uh, so you tend to find that in, the, in these communities you have people who come out and we have one guy who's kind of heading up our tool shop and, and development of it has ideas of uh, key access uh, for members own to the machinery and to workshops to train people up. And he's taking responsibility of that. Um, and other people will jump on and help. But we, the, main, the main thing about these kind of open communities is trust. So you, we have a, a, our membership guidelines uh, and pricing policy is all you need to pay is five euros a month to be a member of the space. But we say, Pay as much as, your, as, as, much, as much as you think it's worth to you, um, and our recommended amount is 20 euros a month. And of the 43 members we have, I think only two or three pay below 20 euros, and that's because of actual financial reasons, rather than they don't think it's valuable to them. So we, we even up front, we put a lot of trust in the people who pay to use this space, and that trust is rewarded with either their uh, help in running the space or in, in other ways. Like we have one member now who's running around trying to find us a better space um, in the short space of time possibly more towards the centre so that we don't lose out by moving out to outside the ring. Yeah. Um, people are very, very keen, uh, very eager to help. Sometimes that's misplaced, but a lot of the time it just it, it, it benefits not only the space in themselves but the wider community as well. Is it possible to pay the contribution in bitcoins? No, no, no. no, no. We, we have the discussion yeah. way too often. 
our financial model. Okay. Uh, actually, you could, mm -hmm. but you need to find someone who transfers it into cash. Ah, okay, yeah. Transfers yeah. it into a bank account. Because of the fluctuality of the... Yes. But okay. also the, the pain in it's the administration. Just not practical. Yeah. Okay, At yeah. The okay. Maybe when actually yeah. something like Mojo Nation comes back or something, like then it will become practical again. But mm -hmm. not at all. It should be nice when it can in Bitcoin. Yes, we have this discussion. Actually, I think it's on the menu. It is. <laughs> we did that. Yeah. We, we document a lot of our processes and decision making on the mailing list. Uh, so whenever someone new comes along, like, hey, what about this? We're always like, well, it's on the menu discussion. Well, it's on the menu. <laughs> yeah. But I think also one of the reasons why we're not doing Bitcoin is administration overhead. We, we do this in our spare time. We don't get paid for it. We pay to be members. Um, so all the stuff that we do in space is in our free time and the guy who does the financial stuff he just doesn't have enough free time he has a hard enough time doing just the money stuff from banks um, so we just don't have the capacity sometimes to do these extra things but also with the communities they don't always go the way you want them to Pe people can, can be well behaved and still you end up with a problem inside the community um, sometimes it can be a lack of communication from the the board of the brain and what they're planning to do with the space or with the future of the, of the, the hacker space in general. And sometimes it can be just complete misunderstanding of a situation. Or somebody comes to the space new and they, they don't have our history uh, of the decisions that we took uh, and, and why we do things in a certain way. And that can sometimes cause a little clash. And then you have this very vocal minority and it looks like the, you know all hell's broken is when it's just uh, just a couple of people shouting, it's a little bit of misunderstanding. So it does take a little effort to, to manage the community and make sure people have the information, uh, but also giving them access and facilitating them to, to help make some other decisions um, wherever anything, which means anybody can suggest something. So if you want something changed in the policy in the space or the way we do something, we put it to a vote. Uh, and you're able to do that as a member. So. So having said that, um, keep calling hack on. Thanks. Yes. Where can you read about how you can set up a hacker space? So if you, if you go to hackerspaces.org, um, there's information there. Um, there's there's also some information, some good information on um, <coughs> the London Hackspace Wiki. Um, I don't know. No, we should read that information. Uh, what is the address of, of that? Of the London Hackspace Wiki? Yes. Uh, Google it. I don't know. Just, just Google it. Uh, just Google the London Hackspace Wiki and then search for setting up the hack. I was part of the London Hackspace for over a year. And when I joined, we had 80 members. And when I left, we had 450. And we, we borrowed uh, some of their strategy, their strategy in running and setting up a Hackspace, and also adopted some, uh, a lot of the Dutch style as well. So it's a bit of a hybrid, but it's, um, for me, it's the most successful way to do that. They have over 500 members right now. And a space which is far too small. Don't they have more hacker spaces in London? I mean, London, how, London there are 10 London, million London, people living Yeah, in? London could quite easily support two hacker spaces. Um, yeah. The current one is in East London, which makes it hard for people in West London to get there. Because even if you're in Zone 2, it's an hour from West to East. Yeah. Um, I think London could support four hacker spaces, North, South, East, and West. Uh, but it just takes some money, some yeah. money to do it. Someone just needs to wake up one day. It's a merit, merit, merit to Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're at 43 members now in Amsterdam. Yeah. Actually, that um, if you compare that to when Redspace started, which is the hackerspace in the in the day, mm -hmm. it took them more than a year to get 40 members. And we got that in three three, uh, three months. Yeah. yeah, but they they started some years ago, eh? so yeah, they started, I mean, uh, right after hacking at Rebel. Yeah. So that was back in 2009, and they are now at I think 80 members. 
And are you now also participating in OM 2013? Yeah, yes. right. I think we all are. Okay. Yeah. We have no choice. Yeah, we have no choice. But it's, it will be good. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same attitude with mm -hmm. OM. It's all volunteer work. Yeah. And it's people helping for the sake of helping and making it better for other people. I just came back from helping to run and organize the UK Africa, the EMF Club, um, which was a great success and sold out. We didn't think we would. Um, but we're setting up a village there, and I'm going to go help with it all and uh, try and make it pretty it, it was in uh, above Amsterdam next year. Yeah, it's near Altmar. Yeah. Near, near Altmar, okay. Hey, how many uh, evenings? Uh, in a typical week, are there are there people there? Saturday almost Saturday. every evening. Almost every evening. There's a, most evenings are two or three minimum, two or three people. Um, Wednesday night tonight <coughs> is the first um, so come along if you're around. Um, I know there's the guy from Servan is going to do some hands-on demos with his folks. Um, but every Wednesday night is our social night, and if you come to our space on a Wednesday night. You will find about so it's proud of people with the F1. So you, you, okay. get, you get a different mix. You get social scientists, you get writers, you get activists, um, IT people, me. But usually just taking the piss out. But uh, yeah, it's a really good crowd. It's a really good mix. And you get to, you get you, you meet people there who you might not ordinarily meet in your normal jobs or uh, social jobs. So. What's the <laughs> age range of your members? Um, as low as eight. 17, 17, all the way up, up to 50 something. So we have a wide yeah. And we and for a hackerspace, we actually have quite a lot of women. We have um, uh, one who's very active in the community and will probably be a future for them. Um, but we do have like a, a quite a, an amount of uh, some kind of minority of women, which is surprising. So, not surprising, no, it, surprising. But it's, it can be rare. Yeah. But um, we, we're trying to make the space a place for. All types of people, uh, women, men, kids as well. Once we move to our new space, I'm, I'm going to start uh, a project called Young Hack Space, which is what we did in London, which is where we take one day out uh, per month and have a, a kids themed day and invite children and parents to come along and, and do stuff, use the laser cutting tools, hacking, software, whatever. And again, it's all volunteer by the volunteer organizers. So. Any other questions? How many how many women are there? As members, I think there's yes. I will be four, five, maybe more. Yeah. I don't know. It's 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 really hard to say as a member. But I mean on, yeah, people coming yeah. along and I mean on the social nights anybody can tell you don't have to be a member. And usually we do get about okay. between five and six women coming on the social nights. So. I mean, so we've had some nights where it's been 50-50, we've had some nights where it's been more. So it's, it's very good, but it is. There. And again, it's a, it's a, our space is very participatory, so if you want something to happen there, if you want to change something, just go ahead and do it. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.